Shabbat Shalom. Ah, wonderful to be together this evening as we move beyond this work week. I invite you to turn in your prayer books to page 213 and take a moment to reflect inside. And recognize that we have all a spark of divinity that connects us together on this Shabbat. And we sing these words, praise to God, page 213. That is called dropping the mic, by the way. <laughs> A little punctuation for that beautiful song. Uh, we now turn to page 13 in our prayer books, and we call upon Betty Landau to come forward to have the honor and the pleasure of kindling the lights of Shabbat. Trick Shabbat candles, by the way, just saying. Light is the foundation of life, yet impossible to touch. Light is flowers growing and fruit trees blossoming, photosynthesis and rainbows shimmering. Light is energy and romance, enlightenment and lightning. Light is red and violet and magenta and blue. Lasers and campfires, warmth and illumination, the sunset and the dawn. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedeshanu Bamitzvata Vitzivanu Bahalak Ner Shel Shabbat. 
Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, eternal source of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu le'hadikem, le'hadikem, shel Chadodi on page 34. Lechadodi, Lechadodi, Lekrat Kala, Lekrat Kala, Neshaba, Neshaba, Gavla, Gavla, Lechadodi. Shamo Vizaho Vidibureha Ishmiad Elham Yuha Adonaiha Shmoeha Shim Tiferet Vidira Lehadoni Hadoti Krakala Krakala Shabbat Shalom. Sof maase be machshava dechila. Lechadodi, lechadodi, lechad kala, lechad kala. Neshaba, neshaba, kabla, kabla. Lechadodi, lechadodi, lechad kala, lechad kala. Neshaba, neshaba, kabla, kabla. Oy v'shalom ateret b'hala Gam v'si v'cha u'v'tzolla Toch v'munei am segula Oy v'chala b'oy v'chala Lechadodi, lechadodi, lekrat kala, lekrat kala, neshaba, neshaba, kavla, kavla, lechadodi, lechadodi, lekrat kala, lekrat kala, neshaba, neshaba, kavla. We continue on page 32. When Reb Zussia was on his deathbed, he was trembling and quaking with fear. His Hasidim tried to reassure him, saying, Reb Zussia, do not fear. Surely God will receive you with the greatest honor. Throughout your life, you have exhibited the faithfulness of Abraham, the wisdom of Moses. Together, 
In the world to come, Rev. Joseph responded. As we commit ourselves to being the best people that we can be, we turn to page 42 for the Chatzikadosh. <laughs> Kadash me rabba, be al madi brachu te, be al brit malu te, be chayechon, be omechon, be chayenu kol beit Yisrael, ba gala, ba gala, ubizman karib, vimiru, amen, yehesh me rabba me vora. Vishtabach, <laughs> Our kind deeds are used by God as seed for the planting of trees in the Garden of Eden. Thus, each of us, by our deeds, has the power to create our own paradise. Baruch atah Adonai, Amari Varavim. Blessed are you, O God, who makes the evening fall. Page, one, 40, page 49. We are loved by an unending love. We are guided by the still, small voice within us. We are loved by an unending love, an air tummy to be tended from generation to generation, and a gentle love, giving meaning to our existence, structure to our lives, and of all the generations who have embraced their covenant. Baruch Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael.
57, we continue. After our beloved prayer um, that speaks to us about what love truly means, love between God and between the people of Israel, it is so wonderful to welcome a couple up that also shows us a different meaning of love love between two people about to start their lives together. So we invite up Abby Lipschitz and Eric Berlin for their wedding blessing tonight. <laughs> Abby and Eric, as you stand here in front of your family, your congregation, our prayer tonight is that two people who are deeply connected to this institution will begin this next stage of life with a connection not only to Judaism, but to Temple Israel. And we pray that as you go from this moment to your wedding chuppah, that you will take the blessings of this entire community with you. We pray that God will help you build a home built on the values of this tradition of faith, of learning, and of community. May your chuppah transform your lives from this unique life as individuals to a beautiful life as a couple, taking two stories and weaving them as one. We pray that God will watch over you and guide you in every moment that you are together, as together we say, Amen. Amen. We join together on the bottom of page 61. Standing at the waters of the Red Sea, at the Mason-Dixon line, at the walls of the Warsaw Ghetto, the Berlin Wall, the wall that separates men from women, the privileged from the persecuted, perpetrator from victim, the master from the slave. We cry out, as did our ancestors in ancient days, let my people go, let all God's people be free, that we may dance and sing together once again at the shores of the Red Sea. Mi kamo kama eli madonai, mi kamo 
Father Adonai et Yaakov, Ugihalo mi ad chazak mi menu, Baruch Adonai, Gaal Yisrael. So there's something about the beginning of this weather, the snow outside, that makes me want to like get my snuggie out of the closet, wrap it around myself, and sit in front of the fire and not move for six months. But I'm not a native here, so maybe you guys like this, but... I just want you to know, Rabbi Leder just announced that she has a Snuggie in several. her closet. More than one. And if you don't have one, you're really missing out. My dog also has one that matches mine. So we join together. To wake us all up, maybe not all of us, but definitely me, the top of page 63. We read responsibly. I am awake to myself and all others. I am awake to every blessing in my life. I am awake to those who share my home. I am awake to whose voice raises praise. I am awake to an ancient text. I am awake to the commands of my time. I am awake. The courage of the priest Baruch atah Adonai haporei sukkat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim blessed are you Adonai whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Jerusalem. Page 65. <laughs> So can Yeah. 
page 68. As you're seated, we pray silently. So of my mind. 
in our prayer books to page 83 as we turn to the Mishaberach. There are so many people who need healing in our world and in our community right now. People whose lives have been touched by fire and illness and pain. And so we think of the people um, in our community and our families, people we love, people we don't even know but we hear about on the news. And we pray for this Mishaberach, uh, prayer for complete healing of body and of spirit, um, page 83. Last Friday, I was enjoying some family time with my husband and kids in Charlevoix. We don't set alarms, I don't wear a watch, pajamas are worn far longer than whatever outfits are worn during the day, and much of our time is spent reading, played board games, snuggling, and going to our favorite bookstores. So you'd think that I would be totally relaxed. I was not. I decided that a yoga class called Gentle Yoga would be the right thing to help calm me down and get my physical body to know what my mind couldn't seem to convince it. It was time to rest. From the shooting in Squirrel Hill to the fires in California, from the anniversary of Kristallnacht to the stress of the elections, our yearly trip up north came just in time. So I took the beautiful drive between Charlevoix and Petoskey taking in the colors of the trees, the blue of the water, and the lack of traffic. It was as though I was preparing myself to pay attention to the most fundamental element of yoga, my own breath. The class was an hour and a half. No problem. I've been doing yoga for over a, the, a year, and I am no professional yogi, but I can hold my own in class. Little did I know that this class would be the hardest class I have ever taken. We began by reclining on a plush pillow and breathing. Then we made big circles with our arms. We moved our legs from side to side. We stretched out our fingers. We rocked back and forth from our heels to our toes. It was simple. I never even took my sweatshirt off and I didn't even break a sweat. I was absolutely beside myself. This wasn't yoga. I was told by so many teachers that only when I began to push to my edge, when I felt discomfort, that's when the yoga began. I had been told for my entire life that exercise meant that I had to be huffing and puffing and sweating through my clothes. I realized the class was called gentle yoga, but to me this was neither yoga nor exercise and gentle was being generous. I actually chuckled to myself a little bit that I would tell my sister later that a dead person could have done the class. Then I started yelling at myself. All this was happening as I was gently stretching my arms over my head and gently twisting ever so slightly from side to side. Why was I so upset that I wasn't in pain? Why was I completely unable to enjoy the ease of the class and the quiet of the room? 
the lack of both internal and external pressures to push myself beyond all limits. On the outside, I was faithfully following my teacher's instructions. On the inside, I was waging war with myself. I decided that for me, that was the yoga. I imagine I'm not alone in this battle. In today's world, we praise pushing ourselves to the brink. We honor those who beat their personal best, the ones who set outrageous goals, and those among us who seem to work tirelessly without sleep. I like pushing myself. I have high standards. I work tirelessly. I have a fault. I need to sleep. But I never really realized it to what expense until I found myself in this gentle yoga class, gently rolling my foot on a tennis ball, waging war in my mind. Maybe that is why God made Shabbat. It happens every week. It literally forces us to quiet down, sit still, take time out, just as we're all doing right now. But now as a rabbi in a rabbi at Temple Israel, no less, I don't think I have to convince you that Shabbat's a pretty busy time around here. We are here for our families to make sure that their simchas are everything they want them to be. So what is a rabbi to do? What are we all to do when life simply won't stop? When we're not afforded the rest we need, or worse, we think we're being lazy if we do finally rest. Take a gentle yoga class, you say? Hilarious. I love how sometimes the Torah portions collide with what's happening in our lives. This week, we read the incredible story of Jacob's ladder, of the angels ascending and descending the ladder, and Jacob awakening to say, God was in this place, and I, I did not know. Jacob had just stolen the birthright from his brother, was running for his life, and would soon meet the two women that would become his wives, one after seven years of work and one after 14. Let's unpack that for just a second. Jacob himself never took the easy way to do anything. He knew tricking his father was wrong. He said as much. But he went through the sophisticated ruse his mother cooked up anyway, instead of going to his father and asking for his own blessing. Instead of confronting Esau after he stole the birthright, he ran, leaving their unification until 20 years later when he again orchestrated a gigantic ruse to appease the anger he was sure Esau still harbored against him. Jacob worked for seven years only to marry the wrong sister because her father knew of Jacob's trickery and literally said to him, we don't do that here, putting the younger before the older. So what did he have to do? He had to work even more. Everything the hard way, nothing the direct route, or the simpler way, that though it might have seemed more difficult at the time, was truly the path of least resistance. And yet, yet, somehow after this dream, he seems to realize the error of his ways. His eyes are opened and he said, God is in this place and I am too busy, distracted, stressed, and hurried to have realized it. Basically, Jacob said, I couldn't slow down long enough to know that God was in this place, that God was with me. I couldn't be restful enough to appreciate the divinity all around me. I was missing the most important presence of my life while I was running, shepherding, working, and scheming. Jacob's declaration upon waking was the same as him saying, God made me stop. God made me pay attention. Only then did I realize that God was in this place. We have those moments, too, when we slow down and are fully present. But usually, like Jacob's dream, something pretty big has to happen to us. Most often, if we're honest, it's a crisis. Someone gets sick, and so all of a sudden we appreciate our health. Someone gets married, and we tell the bride and groom, where are they? Bride and groom. You really do have to enjoy every single second and smell, touch, taste, hear all the magic around you, because if not, It'll fly by and you won't have realized when the night is over. And it is true that when a baby is born and we're in entire delirium, 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. are just as precious because soon enough that baby won't fit on our chests anymore. Life has to flash a giant red light in front of our faces in order for us to stop and not berate ourselves for taking time to be fully present. In that yoga class, I did think about Jacob. And then I thought about my own life. And as I walked out into the beautiful snows of Petoskey, I said to myself, my family's in this place and I don't know it. My body is in this place and I couldn't slow it down. 
My soul is asking to be freed from goals, personal bests, and unrealistic expectations, even for just an hour and a half, and I couldn't let my guard down. It's not sustainable. I know it. We all know it. Goals are great. Motivation to be your best is awesome. But if it comes at the expense of realizing that God's blessings are all around us, and we are meant to appreciate them not just when life throws us a big red light, but as often as humanly possible, then the price of meeting those goals is just too high. I think our hearts understand this. It's our mind and our world that seem to be lagging behind. I know I've got a lot of work to do, and I imagine some of you do too. But from now on, when I am getting the shakes, when I am sitting still trying to rest, I will remember what Jacob said. It's a pretty good mantra if you think about it. God was in this place, and I, I did not know it. God was in this place, and I, I did not know it. Lord knows how many times I'll have to repeat it for it to be effective. I bet it'll be a pretty big number. But after my disastrous experience in gentle yoga, I'm at least willing to try. And I hope you are too. A peaceful and restful Shabbat to you all. Shabbat Shalom. Days pass and the years vanish when we walk sightless among the miracles. God, fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing. Let there be moments when your presence like lightning illumines the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze at the bush burned unconsumed and we clay touched by God who reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder filled with awe is this place. How filled with awe is this place? How filled with awe is this place? And we did not know it. We did not know it. How filled with awe is this place? in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze at the bush burned unconsumed and we clay touched by God who reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder.
like to invite a member of our executive committee, Andy Bachnick, to come forward now to address the congregation. Ethan, are you going to give the announcement? Maybe one. Maybe Ethan. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Mazel tov to the Lipschitz and Berlin families. Uh, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m., join Brotherhood for a Havdalah service, an evening of music with singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer, and cantorial soloist Josh Goldberg. A wine and cheese reception begins at 7.30 p.m., followed by a Havdalah service and acoustic concert. Open to the community and free of charge. Contact Brian Carvel with any questions. Uh, in addition, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, there is a family and snuggie friendly concert uh, for all of the for all of the uh, the students in the Sunday school program it's also open to families and free of charge as well Temple Israel and the Shemir concert series are delighted to welcome back the internationally acclaimed Max sisters Yuki and Tamako this Sunday November 18th at 4 p.m. the Max sisters have been delighting audiences and Temple Israel since they combined their talents as soloists into an award-winning piano duo open to the community as well and uh, no charge what are the spherot? Does my soul have a structure? Do spiritual worlds exist? If you enjoyed Rabbi Label Wolf's lecture, please, uh, please join Cantor Smolash for a five-part introduction to Kabbalah. Thursday evenings from 7 till 8.15 p.m. at Temple Israel beginning November 29th. Contact Maya to RSVP and for the schedule. Please join us after services for the Oneg and Shabbat greetings. On behalf of the officers and members of the Board of Trustees, let me wish each of you a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Andrew. Ethan's going to stay up here and help us with Elenu. Wait, 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 don't leave. But um, I just want to also say that that gentle yoga class sounded perfect for me. <laughs> so I'm going to look that up next time I'm up north. So any kids in the congregation, 11 and younger, come up, help us open the ark. We rise together for Elenu on page 189. <laughs> that this little one is also named Ethan. So we had two Ethans up here, but this little Ethan's wearing jammies, and I said, I want to wear my jammies to Temple. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun, a Snuggie in a jammies? Like <laughs> so we turn now to the task of memory, and we remember those who've died in the period of slow shame the last 30 days. Lee Alpern, Dan Arnold, Stephen Bierbaum, Ernie Barron, Mary Bistro, Dennis Chatlin, Gerald Curtis, Howard Emmer, Joel Fenley, Miriam Gorin, Ernest Greenblatt, Morris Hewler, Leonard Jacobson, Dr. Robert Korn, Rosalind Lazier, Harvey Mann, Nancy Miller, Robert Moss, Joni Rappaport, Martin Rosenfeld, Sidney Ross, Rita Rubin, Jay Rupp, Alfred Spiegel, David Weiner, Rose Winogren. We remember those who died in Squirrel Hill at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Joyce Feinberg, Richard Gottfried, Rose Malinger, Jerry Rabinowitz, Cecil Rosenthal, David Rosenthal, Bernice Simon, Sylvan Simon, Daniel Stein, 
Melvin Wax and Irving Younger. And we also think about all those who've died in California in the shooting as well as in the fires, and we hold them in our hearts. We remember, too, those whose yard sites fall now at the Shabbat. Benjamin Baghdad, Emmanuel Brashad, Faye Blatnikoff Schwartz, Daniel Budson, Ruth Cohen, Stanley Ehrlichman, Abe Elowitz, Aaron Greenfield, William Hacker, Phyllis Hendrick, Irene Keeps, Doris Levin, or Levine, Marvin Lotzoff, Alex Mann, Helen Newman, Irving Rubin, Morris Rudin, Ruby Sampson, Alex Tamaroff, Sarah Weiss, Bernice Gerber, Lloyd Weingarten, Harry Weinstein, Lindsay Jane Vandro, Hannah Schwartz, Abraham Price, Arthur Wolf, Samuel Kaplan, Herman Oster, Morris Silber, Nancy Konigsberg, Barbara Minko, Janet Kushkin, Arthur Braverman, Barbara Kay, Evelyn Lippitz, Charlotte Engelson, Blake Mann, and William Maxwell Mazur Jr. Tehei Nishmotehem Sarabitzrachaim. May their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life and memory. As we turn now to page 199 for the words of Kaddish. Yikadal v'yikada shemei raba ve'al ma divra chirute v'yam lich malchute v'chaye chon v'yom e chon v'chaye duchol beit Yisrael v'agalau v'zman kari v'yamru amen yehe shmei raba mevorach le'olam omei omaya Barach Vishta Bach Vika Arvi Dromam Vita Se Vita Dar Vita Levita Lal Shemediku Chabariku La Ela Minko Birchata Vishirata Tushbechata Venechamata Ta Amiran Vialma Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vahayim Alenu Vialko Yisrael Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Vimromam Huya I say shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. Hud yavo shalom ma'aleinu. Hud yavo shalom ma'aleinu. Hud yavo shalom ma'aleinu. Ve'al kula. Hud yavo shalom ma'aleinu. Odiavo shalom mahaleinu, odiavo shalom mahaleinu, veranula salam, aleinu veyako haola, salam, 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 aleinu veyako haola, salam.
Shabbat Shalom.